good morning to you. You know, this particular week of Thanksgiving, uh, it has been a week of giving thanks, but also, if we're to be honest, uh, a week of sorrow as well, um, as we have said goodbye to two dear uh, men in our church uh, this week, this past week, over the past uh, week in particular. Certainly, uh, Tom Smith and Keith Rhodes, two dear brothers uh, of ours that we love so dearly, and uh, I see members of their families here, and please know that you all are in our hearts, and we all grieve together with you, and, um, you know, we'll have an opportunity to uh, <coughs> say goodbye to these uh, dear friends, and to celebrate their lives, uh, Brother Tom uh, Smith, tomorrow, uh, here in this sanctuary, uh, you'll have a chance to visit with his family, and express your um, love to them uh, beginning at 10 o'clock and then also the service uh, will be at 11 o'clock tomorrow celebrating Tom's life uh, and then also for our brother Keith uh, looking ahead uh, we'll have a celebration of Keith's life on Saturday December the 9th at 11 o'clock here in the sanctuary with a reception uh, and family uh, visitation to follow in the fellowship hall so please keep those in mind um, and you know, I just feel it's important for us just to pause for a minute uh, and just to have a moment of silence and of thanksgiving for these two men. Can we do that together? instructs us to be still and to know that you are God. And so we come into your presence with heavy hearts and yet hearts of thanksgiving. We thank you in particular for Tom and for Keith and for their lives. And though we come with sorrow, we know that one day we will be free from all the sorrows of this life and the sin that so easily besets us. And we will rejoice in your presence. Until that time, and even in this hour, give us reason to rejoice and to give thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you happen to be here for the first time uh, this week, we welcome you. Uh, if you've gone down our halls, you might think this is an odd Baptist church. <laughs> Uh, well, it is. It's a unique Baptist <laughs> church in many ways. And um, uh, we're preparing for something called a night in Bethlehem. And to all of you who have worked so hard and given so much, uh, we are grateful. Uh, everything is almost in place. And um, so we are anticipating a wonderful weekend, the first weekend of December, in which we get to tell the story once again to our community uh, of a real savior who was born in a real town at a real time in a, in a real place for a real purpose. And that purpose is to give you and I hope for all eternity, uh, to give us life abundantly. And uh, certainly um, you've been a part of preparing for that. Now invite your neighbors and friends to come and be a part of that if you don't know what it is. Uh, it's a walk through, very hands-on type experience. You're immersed in Bethlehem the night that Jesus was born, uh, experiencing the life and the frustrations, the joys and the sorrows of people uh, of Bethlehem on a particular night in history. And on a night when everything changed, literally the hinge of history changed, the, the door swung open on that night. And so uh, we hope that you'll come. You'll get to uh, see, taste, experience. Um, some of the wonders of uh, that particular time and place and finish your time remembering uh, that uh, Jesus was born in flesh. He came and dwelt among us, was one of us, taught us how to live, how to love. He died, he rose again. We'll tell all that story. Uh, so I hope you'll invite your friends, be inviting folks to come. Please invite them to uh, register online. 
uh, so that they will have the time to come. We don't want people to stand in line any longer than they have to getting in. So if people schedule their times, it'll really help us uh, to be able to get people in in a nice even flow. So if you would encourage your friends and family to go online at our website and register for a time to arrive, it would be really helpful. Uh, yes, we'll accept walk-ins, of course, um, but we, that would just help us in getting people in and expediting that. We've had a wonderful week of collecting shoe boxes. Uh, you're surrounded by them, and uh, right after church today, a few hands would be welcome to load those into a trailer that will be uh, parked out back. And uh, so if you'd be so willing and kind to help with that little project <clears throat> of uh, loading those boxes onto the trailer, uh, that will help us uh, very much. And then also bringing some of the Christmas items down from uh, the barn. So a little bit of chores to do after church today, but you're always so willing and so helpful to be able to do that. So thank you for being willing uh, to do that today. You're here to worship. We have come into this place uh, by God's divine design. You didn't just wake up and decide to come here this morning. We believe that God put it on your heart to get up and to come and to be in this place because he has a word for you in the midst of all that's going on in your life. So I invite you to stand, to greet your neighbor, and to welcome those who worship near you. And then let's begin to worship through singing. Shall we stand? <coughs>
you're seated. Will you join me as we pray? Continuing, of course, to remember the Smith and Rhodes families. Also, uh, Sister Annette Angel, who suffered a broken ankle. She's recovering at home. Ben and Ann Gardner, uh, also suffering with ill health. Uh, and also just other families, uh, B.B. Hemming in particular, uh, who had a heart procedure and is recovering at home this week. Any others in your hearts? Let's just bow together. In the midst of this hour, Father, we come before you to worship. We find ourselves uh, as those of old who in the midst of uh, suffering and sorrow found reason to lift their praise and their voices to you, a God who is good and a God who is faithful to all generations. And in the midst of these days, we lean upon you for hope and encouragement. This is uh, those days in which our faith becomes real. It becomes uh, more than uh, that which is out of reach. It becomes that which is uh, indeed very present in our lives uh, in this moment. And so I thank you, Father, for this gathered group and for their hearts uh, and their voices to lift praise and adoration to you. And Lord, you bless us in so many ways. Uh, were we to count them, number them, uh, we could not do so. And so from the least of things that we have, uh, Lord, to the greatest blessings, uh, make our hearts grateful and fill them with gratitude in this hour, this day. And Father, we pray uh, on this uh, particular week that we would be people who live not uh, just in this week, as people who are mindful of being thank, uh, thankful for those things that are uh, very abundant in our lives, but that we be people, Father, who throughout the year live with constant attitudes of gratitude uh, for each uh, and every day, each and every hour, each and every blessing. Uh, Father, as we lift names and needs to you, we're mindful of those who suffer, those who grieve, those who uh, need your help in particular ways, and we pray for those who need your help most of all in spiritual ways, those who do not have hope and peace and comfort uh, in their lives, and those who could find that uh, simply through faith in Jesus Christ. We pray that today, that would be the day, that each of us would go home saying, uh, I am at peace with God and at peace within because of Christ. We pray as we lift names and needs to you that you would hear us, O oh God, and we do that now with earnest expectation. pray that the nations would sing for joy as they know you, as they follow you, as they are known by you uh, around the world. May your word go forth today uh, in every corner of the world, bringing forth a harvest truly. And that would be our prayer in this room as well. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to stand and to join in reading responsively with me from Psalm 100. Would you stand and uh, read along with me? I'll read the leader portion, of course. You reading the people. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Honor the Lord with songs. Know that the Lord is God. Praise his name. Give thanks to him for the Lord's sake. Give thanks to him for the Lord's Yes, that is all. His faithfulness continues to all generations. Amen.
has been so faithful to us in our generation. May we be faithful in our giving, in our loving, in our serving. I'll invite our ushers to come at this time to receive our morning offering. We do this as a part of our worship. If you happen to be new here, we don't expect you to give, but if you would like, you certainly are welcome to do so. Um, but we believe as God's people that God has given to us so much and a way of worshiping him is to give back of the first fruits of that which he gives to us. So let's do that just now. Brother uh, Dan Brown, would you please pray for us? Father, we, uh, we come our stuff in front of you, Father. We just praise your greatness, Father, and thank you for the gift that you give to us. And thank you for the ability for us to come here and then to uh, worship you, Father, but also to serve and glorify you, Father. And we just thank you so much for this. Father, we just pray that you uh, the gifts that we'll be given today, which are yours to you, and Father, we just return them to you and just direct us in wisdom how they might be able to glorify your kingdom. We ask this all in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
us to remember Rayleigh. In the midst of any given week, sometimes it's important to be reminded of God's faithfulness and of his goodness uh, to us in every situation and at all times. If I could uh, invite Scott or some dear friend to bring me the clicker down here, I'm going to use it, if it happens to be handy. That's an important thing for me, you know that. So, yeah. Thank you, sir, you're awesome. Awesome and a gentleman. <coughs> Give thanks in all circumstances. That's uh, easier said than done, isn't it? Give thanks in all circumstances. I, I thought about this week and I plan to share this message from this passage, uh, you know, earlier. Before circumstances weren't so good, <coughs> at least from our perspective. Because uh, our world and our hearts are very attached to the people we love. And so when they're not present with us, those circumstances seem not pleasant and not good. At least from our perspective, and certainly at least in the beginning. And so as I share with you, This message today. Know that. Uh, excuse me, just a second. Maybe we'll all just take a moment. that I too am learning to give thanks in every circumstance. As we consider what God's word says, and I think it's important in every situation of life, and I've come to find this to be true, if I only look at life through the lens of my own eyes and my own human experience, I get lost. I just get lost. I get lost in my own head. I get lost in my own understanding. I get lost in my own emotions. I get lost. And God's word is that place that recenters me and restabilizes me and helps me to find my way out of the dark back to the light. And so I think that's real important for us in every circumstance of life. And I think that's one of the reasons why God's children throughout the Bible, if you read the Bible, and you all, many of you read the Bible this, uh, the beginning of this year, you read the Bible. And so you saw in the Old Testament, uh, as you were reading through that, you saw that an attitude of gratitude is characteristic of God's people. And there was just time after time after time when people were even set aside and assigned to give thanks to God in the midst of whatever the country, nation, or people of God were going through. There were uh, choirs assigned to sing and give thanks. There were people who were assigned at the temple to constantly just give thanks and praise to God because we all need to be reminded of that. And an attitude of gratitude is a characteristic of God's people. Um, it's not necessarily that of the world. And so it's good for me to be reminded of that. Uh, you look in the New Testament and you see that Jesus set for us an example. Um, for, if you look at Matt Mark's gospel, for example, uh, do you remember when uh, the needs of the people uh, for food were great? And they find this boy with uh, a few uh, loaves and fish, right? Do you remember the story? And when the needs were great and the resources seemed small, and Jesus took this little and he 
looked up to heaven and gave thanks and began to break it and have his disciples distribute it. You remember the story? And they kept distributing and kept and kept and kept distributing until everyone was fed and satisfied. When the resources are small, seem small, and the needs are great, Jesus takes the little and he looks up to heaven and gives thanks. And somehow it's enough. And some of you need to know that in your own life. You need to understand that I don't know how when the month is more than the money. Do you understand that? I don't know how God can make that happen for you. But I know if you take what little and you offer it to him with thanksgiving, that somehow he can help make that work. He just has a way of helping. When we begin by giving thanks, when Jesus gave thanks, when the grief was overwhelming, as I thought about this, and all seemed hopeless. And you know, he came to the tomb of Lazarus and his dear friends. And there he wept alongside the sisters, Mary and Martha. And before he performed that great miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead, Jesus looked up to heaven and he gave thanks. And he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me and that you always hear me. There was something about giving thanks when the need was great or when the miracle was needed or when people had gathered in a seemingly hopeless situation, Jesus paused and gave thanks. He gave thanks even when he was nearing his own death. There in the upper room, you recall, he took the bread and he broke it and he gave thanks and he distributed it to his disciples and he said to them, this is my body which is broken for you. And he took the cup in the same manner and he gave thanks. Again, he gave thanks twice. He gave thanks for the cup and he distributed it and saying, this is my blood which is poured out for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. And Jesus is giving thanks on the eve of what would be his death. Thankfulness, it's, there throughout scripture. You can see it at every turn. And so it's not surprising that Paul, when he is instructing God's people in the church and how to live out this Christ life in everyday circumstances where they're not always good, <coughs> includes instructions to be thankful, to give thanks. And I wanna to talk to us about that here this morning for just a moment. The scripture that we'll look at is 1 Thessalonians 5.18, which says, Give thanks in all circumstances. Why? For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. One of the things that we can know in scripture, that is, many people say to me, Pastor, if I just knew what God's will was, I would do that. And some things are very clear in scripture, and they're just spelled out in such an, an amazing way. For this is God's will. It's God's will for you to give thanks in all circumstances. Why is that? Because it's so critical and important for you and I to learn this as we uh, grow in Christ and as we walk through this life together. I've often said, if you don't understand the text, we'll expand it and look at the context. So just a verse before and a verse after. Um, rejoice all, a couple of verses before. In this passage, First Thessalonians chapter 5, rejoice always, just little phrases. Pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. I think verse 17 is kind of the peanut, is kind of the jelly between the bread and the peanut butter. It's that which glues the rejoice always and the give thanks. It's not easy to rejoice always, is it? It's not easy to give thanks in all circumstances. And I think that's why I pray continually is tucked right in the middle of those. It's this constant ongoing prayer that gives us the ability to come back in every circumstance and to rejoice, to find a reason to rejoice. Uh, Paul would say to the Philippian church, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, not rejoice over your circumstances, but rejoice in the Lord. <laughs> and furthermore, do not be anxious in Philippians, Paul would say, about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, <laughs> there it is, with thanksgiving. <laughs> so to the church at Thessalonica, to the Philippian church, Paul is instructing and teaching God's people how to live out life 
in the anxious moments of life, in the every situation moments of life, to bring prayer and petition with thanksgiving to God. Present your request to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, which shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's not there, but that's what happens as a result. So this thanksgiving is such an important part of our lives in the midst of every situation, but it is this, it has to be for us. It has to be an intentional practice because it won't come naturally at first. It's hard for us to be thankful in all circumstances. It's hard for us to practice thanksgiving <clears throat> in every situation. We have to be, I think, intentional because it does not come naturally at first. And you say, well, I don't, I don't even know Sometimes I don't even know where to begin and what to be thankful for because I can't see anything at all. For me, as a person, and as a pastor, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, pastors don't have any trouble with this. Oh, yeah, sometimes, you know, this guy puts on his shoes like you do. Um, yeah, every day. I go to the Psalms as a place when I'm having trouble finding something to be thankful for, I go to the Psalms and I just start looking through because there's so many things that help to remind me, <clears throat> that help to guide me, that help me to get to a place of thankfulness like Psalm 136. One is a great place. Just give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. If I don't know anything else, I'm gonna declare that God is good. He is good. I know he's good. And I know that his love for me endures forever. It will not end. And if I can just start there, if I can just catch a glimpse of just that much, it helps me to move from not being, you know, I'm being very unthankful, <clears throat> if I'm honest, to sometimes beginning to say, no, God is good. But I think maybe he's not. And his love endures forever. For thankfulness helps me to focus on, helps you to focus on what we have instead of what we lack. And there are many things that we wish for, that we pray for, that we long for, that we do not receive. But what we always have is God's love and faithfulness and his goodness. And it helps me to begin to think about, okay, I have that. I have the love and the faithfulness and the goodness of God. <clears throat> Even when I don't have those things I've prayed and longed for, and it helps me to focus on what I have instead of what I lack. And so if I could share with you, I'll share with you three things that you can be thankful for in every circumstance. At least three things that you can be thankful for in every circumstance. And the first is simply this, God's presence with us. We're getting ready to go into the Christmas season. I'll jump ahead. Some of you have already started putting up your Christmas things. I have. We have. Melissa has. Because maybe we just need some light and peace and joy and all those things that God gives to us in the Christmas season, you know? So I think it, we just need to kind of bring that a little bit early to our home and Maybe you do too, but Emmanuel, what does it mean? God with us. He's with us. And so it's important for us to know that in Jesus coming to earth, he wanted us to know that God was with us. In fact, you go back and look in the Old Testament and Joshua, who was the young leader under Moses, and he took up leadership after Moses had died. And he said, how do I go on? And I don't know. Would you have liked to have followed Moses? Anybody in here would like to have followed leadership of Moses? I'm not raising my hand on that one. I mean, like Moses and then everybody. You know, seems to me like. But Joshua had the assignment of leading after Moses. It was overwhelming. How do you, how do you follow that? How do you step into those shoes? Where do you begin? And God, and right off the bat, gives a message to Joshua. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Fear and discouragement are two of our greatest enemies in this world. Did you know that? Fear and discouragement are two of your greatest enemies as God's people in this world. And the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will what? Will be with you wherever you go. Joshua didn't know where he was going. He didn't know how he was going to accomplish what God had assigned for him to do. He didn't know what the future held. But God wanted him to know that wherever you go from here, from this point forward, I am with you. 
and I'll always be with you wherever you go. That's a good place to start. In the midst of when life seems overwhelming to you, the psalm writer would say it this way, God is our refuge, he's our hiding place, and our strength, and ever-present help in trouble. Listen, this world will bring you trouble. Jesus said it this way, in this world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And so the Psalms, God's word, helps me reset, recenter and remind me that God is my hiding place and he's my strength and he's ever present in trouble and life brings trouble and hardship and difficulty. And as God's children, it's important for us to remember that God is present with us. Secondly, we have God's word for us. And I've said this already this morning, but God's word is so helpful and essential. And that's why he gave it to us. Uh, in fact, if you go back and read Joshua, he says, do not let the, uh, the book of the law depart out of your mouth. It, keep it in your heart. Just say it, speak it, live it. I mean, it's just so essential. We have God's word for us. And in the darkest hour, in the worst of circumstances, the psalm writer would say, your word, your word, oh God, is a lamp to my feet. It's a light upon my path. And it illuminates my world and my walk when the <coughs> hour is the darkest. When I am praying, God, let this cup pass from me with Jesus in the garden. How do you get to a place when you hear Jesus' words, yet not my will, but your will be done. We have his words that illuminate the path ahead of us and that help us to find a way forward. And this week, with both of these dear families who've gone through a time of loss, both of them have shared with me in separate times in different ways. Listen, God can and will bring good through these times. He will. Out of the worst of situations, out of the things that shock us, that cause us great grief and sorrow, God's word guides us and illuminates our path. When we read Jesus' words and how he lived, we, are, we too are enlightened, and enlightened as to how to live in every situation. Not my will, Father, but thine be done. And thirdly, we can give thanks that we have God's power within us. Not only do we have his presence, not only do we have his word, but we have his power as believers, as children uh, of God. We have Jesus' disciples. Jesus was telling them, I'm going away from you, and their grief was real. And their sorrow was heavy. But Jesus said, listen, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. You know him, for he lives what? With you and will be in you. <clears throat> Can I go anywhere without, I don't know, what's in me? <laughs> um, my heart, <laughs> my lungs, you know, the, the things that are essential to life, right? Wherever I go, they're in me, and wherever I go, the Spirit of God, the Father has given to me, Jesus said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you uh, and will be with you forever. That's not just for a day or an hour or a month. It's forever as long and it's forever is forever. The spirit of truth that which will guide you. You know him for he lives with you and will be in you. And I can be thankful that I'm not alone. But that God has given me his spirit within me. That's a great comfort to me. We hear in the word of God that we have been given comfort from God so that we can also pass on the comfort of God. When we ourselves are comforted, we can pass on the comfort. And so we can be thankful for his presence and for the comforter. The Holy Spirit is also known as the great comforter in every situation. Listen, we can give thanks in all circumstances, not necessarily for all circumstances, but in all circumstances. What does it really matter? Well, giving thanks 
doesn't necessarily change circumstances, but it can change my and your perception of them. In the times when we feel that are darkest, in the times when we feel there's not much to be thankful for, in the times when we feel uh, that we're so alone, we can go in God's word and begin to give thanks for God's love and faithfulness and that his love endures forever. We can begin to hear his voice, that he will not leave us nor forsake us. We can begin to know that he is with us wherever we go, just as he was with Joshua. And he, desi he desires, Jesus has said, I have come to give you life and to give it to you abundantly. I will never leave and never forsake you. There are people and there are so many blessings that God has given to us in our lives every day. And I want to give you just a moment to pause and to reflect on that. In fact, I want you to not go away without even making a short list and writing some of those down. So in this moment of prayer and reflection, I'm going to invite you to write a few things down very quickly. Because sometimes we go away from times like this and we... Um, we may forget, or we may, we, and God, I think, comes on us, can just say, Dan, can you have it? Uh, it maybe if you don't have a pen, I have some to pass along as well. And Scott, if you will help me. And so as you, you're just going to receive a blank piece of paper. Thank you so much. There's some pens under your seats. If you don't have one, or if you have an extra, you can share one with your neighbor. <coughs> And on this blank piece of oh, there's one. You brought your own whole bag of pens, your own. Oh, thank you. If you need a pen, Scott, can I ask you to? Or either Scott. There's just a whole box of them right there. On this piece of paper that you're receiving, if you would just take a moment. <coughs> And think about some people in your life. Some people in your life that you just need to write a short thank you note to. To give thanks for and to give thanks to. I think sometimes an expression of thanks, and it can begin just like this. And maybe there's multiple. And for all of us, there probably are multiple people in our lives. But if it could just be one person, just to start, I'm thankful for you because, or I thank God for you, that might even be better, because, who would that be? Maybe you're not ready to write the note, but you would begin to make a list. One, two, three, five names. Won't make so many that you can't accomplish it, but in the next day or two or three, you would simply write a short note to one, maybe two or three people. I thank my God for you. I want to give you just a moment to think about that and to write. watching on uh, line or at home, grab a piece of paper, join with us.
you about one more minute to get to a stopping place. for just a moment. And there's a second part of that, maybe not just the people, but also to the God who has given and blessed you. The psalm writer said, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. My question for you would be, why would you say, I give thanks to the Lord? I give thanks to you, Lord, for you are good, for your love endures forever. I give thanks to you, Lord, and now you fill in the blank. I would encourage you to spend a little time today. If you put it off, you might not. Five or <coughs> ten minutes. I give thanks to you, Lord, for or because, and you fill in the blank. God, we have come into this room to worship. And that really means to meet with you. <coughs> and I pray that somewhere along the way today, whether it's been through a song or a word spoken, through a prayer, through the scripture, that we have encountered you in some way, that we have been reminded of your goodness, your faithfulness, and of reasons that we have to be thankful. And they are abundant. And we confess that sometimes we can't see. And I'm thinking particularly of this morning is I was looking out across the valley here in Mills River and the fog was heavy. And I knew the sun was rising, but I couldn't see it clearly. And it took a while for that to clear. And I know that there are moments in this life when we just can't see clearly. In those moments, help us to believe and be thankful beyond the fog and the clouds of the day. We confess that we need you and we thank you that you're ever present and ever ready to help in our times of trouble. And we receive that truth and we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus who gives us hope and life. Amen. 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 So we close this time of worship. There may be a particular specific request that God has put upon your heart just for prayer. Or it may be that you, for the first time, have heard that there is a different way to live life in relationship to the God who is good and who loves. And you would say simply, I don't understand all that that means, but something in my heart tells me that I need that in my life. And would you help me pray about beginning that journey? And Pastor Gray and I will be at the front. We'd be happy to pray with you. Or a neighbor would be happy to pray with you. As we stand and as we sing, let's give thanks together. <laughs>
have so many reasons to give thanks, do we not? I pray that as you uh, leave this room today, that your heart will be filled with those reasons and reminded of those reasons. And as you go throughout this week, wherever your journey may take you, uh, I pray that God's blessings will rest upon you um, and that you will be safe. Many of you I know are traveling. Some of you are traveling and also have family traveling to visit you uh, for the Thanksgiving holiday. So we pray God's grace and blessings over all of your families. Uh, please be reminded or be mindful uh, of uh, the uh, funeral services, celebration of life for Brother Tom Smith here at the church tomorrow. Again, family visitation at 10, service at 11, followed by a graveside um, at Shepherd's Park. So please keep that in mind. Be praying for uh, all the Smith family. I know that you will. Uh, and certainly continue praying for the Rhodes family as well. Um, and extending your love to them. Thanks for all the ways you're doing that. And we'll do that. Um, remember this Wednesday, no services uh, on Wednesday night. So uh, again, many of you are traveling, others have family coming in. So no services on this Wednesday night. But a week from Wednesday, uh, we would love to have you all in costume and ready to do a walkthrough of a night in Bethlehem. Be ready by 6 o'clock. So get here a little early, eat on the way if you can, uh, grab a bite somewhere, and then be here. We'll do a walkthrough. Uh, so that we all know where we're going and what we're doing. Everyone will have a costume. And uh, if you haven't yet signed up, you said, you know, I, I can be a townsperson. I don't know what, I can walk around and just kind of you know, carry stuff. You know, you could do that. Uh, not heavy stuff, light stuff. You could carry that. Uh, if you'd like to participate as a, an active participant, uh, that would be awesome. So you can certainly do that. Um, after we finish, uh, the trailer is outside, right out back. Uh, these large cartons need to be placed neatly into that trailer. And then, uh, once that's finished or in the out of the way, we'll go to the barn and bring the Christmas stuff, placing that into the prayer room so it'll be inside. Uh, we can access that for the next week, but we need to go ahead and get it today. So if you could help with those two chores, that would be amazing. And we just love and appreciate you all. Daniel, as of right now, we've collected 465 boxes. Last year, we collected 322. Wow. wow. So 465. Wow. <laughs> we've had a wonderful collection. Uh, not only, and you helped pack, by the way, uh, it's been said, but 113 boxes. Uh, just by bringing those one or two items a month, we all came together, and 113. So thank you so much for. We celebrate that for sure. Um, so thanks for updating us on that. I'll ask Pastor Gray if he would please to pray for us, and uh, then we'll close out. And may God bless you and keep you. Lord, you're gracious, you're compassionate, you're slow to anger, you're abounding in steadfast love. You have told us that this is who you are uh, in your word, uh, God. And this is also something for us to strive to be. And so I just pray uh, just for our walks this week that you can uh, just allow us to imitate you uh, through imitating your son. God, we're thankful for sending your son to die uh, in our place and to give us eternal life. And uh, again, I pray that as we enter into this Thanksgiving season, we do it through the means of the gospel, that uh, all the struggles, all the pressures, everything that's going on in life, uh, God, we have hope uh, through Jesus, and we have a way to have a relationship with you through Jesus. And so we thank you, and it's in his victorious and mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.